Hello, welcome to Warhammer 3. This is going to be my first playthrough of the game at all. Over the years, across various Steam sales, I've picked up everything for Warhammer 3. But the issue is that every time I've been like, oh, you know what, I want to play Total War, I've gone back to my roots and played Rome or Medieval 2 or some other strategy game. I've never actually sat down and played Total Warhammer. And it's a very intimidating game the first time you want to sit down and play it because there's just so much content. Now, I've already played the tutorial off camera. And I could play the Realm of Chaos. This is the shorter, more cinematic quest-based campaign. Immortal Empires, my understanding, is the sandbox campaign. Oh, there we go. It's a vast sandbox campaign. And up here, narrative focus campaign. So here's the thing, right? I hated the tutorial because of quest missions. When you tell me one's a sandbox campaign, i.e. an actual Total War game, and one has more quest missions, that's not actually a choice. Empires I'm playing Immortal quests. Empires. Yes. And looking at Immortal Empires, I know that these icons mean these are the recommended wins. And I'm going to be going right now, spoilers, you already know the video title, imagine. We're going to go with the High Elves and Tyrion. Because I looked at the map, and I'm like, oh, hey, Ulthwan in the middle is kind of like playing Ireland as a tutorial for a European Total War, or for Crusader Kings. It's an isolated island. It's a good place to learn how the game works, and I'm being recommended one of the factions there. Let's play as these guys. But there is so much going on in this campaign, in this game, that it's just staggering as to where to start with something like starcraft you have three races with something like any historical game you kind of know what the units are and what the world map looks like but with this it's just like oh yeah if we go to change race there are lizard men i don't know if they're all in the same place or if there's just like scattered across the whole world we have so many bizarre out of left field factions where it's like you know what if it was China, except they were literally mythological dragons with magical powers? And that's as mundane as it gets, right? We have, like, a Holy Roman Empire that stands out by being boring, and then everything else is absolute nonsense like the Skaven, although that is cherry-picking the best example. And if you ask me, like, how do Skaven match up against other things, I'm like, dude, we need to wind it back a little bit. So that's what this first campaign is going to be. Going forward, when I start new campaigns, and I'll typically be doing shorter series with this, I'm not intending to paint the map. But with this first campaign, I'm not starting anything off camera. I'm going to play this first one entirely blind so that I get that recorded on camera. And then going forward into future campaigns, I'll be playing like an hour of that campaign off camera to get an idea of like how the faction works without anything else, but I imagine there'll be questions I'll need answers to that I might not know myself. And I think having my initial Hi, first impressions I'm of the Tyrion. game truly captured by this yeah, will be nice. Oh, real quick before I get into this though, I just, I do want to say, coming over to campaign real quick, this tutorial is not actually a good way to teach people the game. I, for instance, I learned nothing about the winds of magic. I'm aware that is a term. I'm aware it affects how much magic I can use. The tutorial in no way emphasized that as a mechanic. It seems like a glaring issue. I have no idea how much flanking actually matters. Like, I understand that leadership is a mechanic that exists and it's better telegraph than old routing rules, but I don't know if flanking actually matters. The way people talk about the game, it sounds like it basically doesn't. So there's just a tremendous amount of I uncertainty with how this game works for me. So bear with me as I stumble through it for this first campaign and probably the first couple. In the future, I fully intend to switch my campaign settings over to very hard, very hard of the equivalents thereof in the future. I guess it's a legendary very hard then. Yes. But for now, for this first one where I don't even know where the buttons to do things are, let's go with normal, normal. And once I get to the point where I feel like this campaign is too easy or a foregone conclusion, we'll switch over to the next campaign and up the difficulties. And that's the plan for the first couple of series with this. Now, there's a ton of options over here. There's a thing called an in-game crisis. And there's not a huge amount to explain the in-game crisis, because, like, if you look at Vermintide, it's a meme about how the Skaven don't exist. There's no clear explanation of how a lot of things work here. And it's just very funny to me. But I think the real takeaway here is based on my history with Total War. What this says right now is the end game difficulty spike is going to happen after I've already quit the game. Because I can't imagine making it to turn 100 in a Total War game and still thinking it's challenging. Apparently if I had started on Total Warhammer 2 that might be the case. But Total Warhammer 3 apparently is notorious for passive AI that allowed the gameplay to snowball in the player's favor, which is unfortunate. But let's see how true that is. Let's get into it. Let's start stumbling. As far as I should mention, I've watched some amount of Total Warhammer guides. The issue is that when you watch them, if you watch someone who's really good at gaming like Legend of Total War, they're skipping straight to actually doing things without a huge amount of explanation at the basic level, which is, that's how it should be. But it means it's not super helpful for learning. And for a lot of the guides, it's like, this is how a strategy game works. It's starting way more basic than my current understanding. I can't find the middle ground of like, 
What exactly Sons does a historical war refugee of, of need to know going into this by comparison? Fight. Now, when we come in, we get a tutorial on how we play. I wish I heard someone say Etain just now, because I don't think that's how it's pronounced. But oh well, we are an influence, which is just another resource we have. Sure. It says we earn, and it doesn't specify how. We just use it to recruit lords and heroes and for political events. The court is a place we spend our intrigue. Fair enough. And we can establish outposts and allies' lands to garner faction influence or further influence through espionage. I believe diplomacy does exist in Warhammer 3. I could be wrong about this. But I think the days of Siege Shuttle War, where if your neighbors you're at war don't believe their lies, might actually be done in Warhammer 3. Let's learn some more. Wait, is this literally the exact same text? With like slightly more words? Alright, this one's new. There are fortress gate settlements that siege weapons can't be used against. Man, you're getting ahead of yourself. You think the tutorial covered siege weaponry? Hell no. And I can perform rites, but I can't seem to find any clear information on exactly what they are, so hopefully we'll figure that out soon. We have a mission. We need to fight the Cult of Excess, which is the purple dark elves above us, correct? Is there a way to change the angle? No, just how high up I am. Oh, it changes the angle automatically as you get really far out. All right, so this is a starting mission, and I think every faction has something like this where it's like, hey, grab your starting army and come fight something next to you. Though I thought there'd be a guy next to me and not just this here. What do you oh wait, this is their army. There we go. They're invading my lands. That's not me. I'm right Champion here. Of the Ever Queen. I have a Flamespire Phoenix, which, oh, this is going to be one of the things that takes the longest to get used to. There are stats on the left, right? Those are certainly numbers, right? It just takes a hot second to make any sense of it. So, like, comparing the Flames Fire Phoenix to which of these Spearmen sounds better? Probably the Sea Guards and not the Spearmen, right? So, these guys have 40 armor compared to the Phoenix's 30. 78 leadership compared to 73. So, in terms of... That can't be right. There must be more to durability, right? Is there a health stat somewhere? Like, shorty... The, oh, yeah, 58, 28. There we go. Whereas these guys have 6120, I assume, as an entire unit. So the Phoenix is about as durable as an entire unit of Sea Guards. It's also obviously much faster, faster even than our cavalry. Oh, and it has an ability called Wave Fire that's a bombardment ability, along with a ton of other stuff that might not be as interesting. What? If my hit points get under 25%, I can cast an ability called Hex that slightly weakens one unit. Chance of unit gaining hit points, chance of unit instantly dying. Here's a Lovecraft quote, have fun. Okay, thanks for that. I feel like you only ever use this if you're risking losing the battle if you don't use it, right? You'd rather not lose the unit since regeneration is passive. You just take it out of the battle and you never use this. I don't know what a miscast chance is. You'd think that would have come up in the tutorial. I genuinely don't. Is that the chance of getting the other result? Because I don't want to pass an ability that's a 15% chance to kill the unit instantly. So the big thing is this appears to be a fast unit that has a ranged bombardment ability. Seems good. And the rest of this is just spearmen, one unit of cavalry. We have Tyrion. What's Tyrion about? Apparently he can just beat down the city gate with his bare hands. Is that normal? That doesn't feel like it should be normal. Is this something that just affects you if you're wounded? Is that what it is? Because it doesn't seem like an ability. It's a passive ability, but it also recharges if. Which I think is bad localization then, right? This is becomes active when, not recharges if. And that's just once you're under 25%, you suck, right? I think I understand what this is now. It just fully tricked me by saying recharges if instead of active when. Is there a way to close these? Or are they just here now? Like, I can minimize the group. It feels weird that I can't just get rid of this, though. There's no button to do so. Anyway, I imagine we should group up and fight this guy. That seems like a perfectly reasonable step. One. Oh, you actually can't move into range of them unless you're attacking them full stop. I was going to try to walk up to them to do it, but I guess I'll waste some movement here. It probably won't matter anyway. This is one of the weird things where I have to scout to merge units. Am I, like, messing up, or is that actually how it works? Anyway, let's come attack this. Battle is upon us. Study it's got two units of Dark Riders. Carefully. How do these compare to my cavalry? 30 armor, 57 Blood leadership, 92 speed. speed. Um, wait a second, what's this? Why is there a tutorial here? Okay, I'm at high advice. That's why that's here. Um, 
Yep, these sure are the buttons that do the things. I'm going Hold to retreat. Back. It's still there. Okay, it's gone now. Thank Champion you. Now, can I please see my stats when I fight them this time? <laughs> Dark Riders. They're faster than my guys by a lot, but armor 30, melee attack 26, melee defense 24, armor 90, melee attack. Right, so we're way, way better in a straight fight, but we are outnumbered 2 to 1, so it probably is a bit of a wash. They have missile infantry, I don't. And they also have spears. How are theirs by comparison? 40, 28, 42. 40, 20, 38. So ours are a little bit worse, but we do outnumber them substantially. Apparently, I can just auto-resolve this, but that sounds like I'm not learning valuable lessons if I do, so we're going to fight this for real. You would think there'd be some sort of tooltip explaining what the odds and function of the channel magic button are. It sounds like I press this and theoretically get more magic. Do I even have someone capable of using magic? What do you do? I have a buff spell, and that's kind of it. So it seems like a moot point. It doesn't even seem like it matters if I do this. Just gonna press and see what happens. Uh, I've channeled the winds of magic. I think my power reserve went down and it got worse. I'm not sure. I would love a breakdown of what that feature is, because I have no idea. It seems sensible to move over here with my spearmen, and, you know, by consequence, everything else, just get on top of the hill. I don't know if my horsemen should be near me or far away. I'll keep them near me. There's no good reason not to. Whenever I watch Legend of Total War, his heroes are always in front of his armies. They're just gonna assume that's right. And as this thing has the ability to use some sort of bombardment ability, we're gonna start with that. Oh wait, what's the difference in start deployment and start battle? Why is the battle not started? I'm not gonna click this. I played the entire tutorial. I'm sure this is a trap. You're just going to waste my time a lot. No, thank you. So my one concern here is that because they have archers, I am not just safe to antagonize them with the Phoenix. Oh, what? When you press that button, it just shits out the fire immediately. Okay. That's not what I thought was going to happen. Do I want to use it on these guys? They have relatively shit defense, right? Seems sensible to. Is there a hotkey for this? I suppose they're not as clumped up as a normal unit would be, right? So it would make more sense not to. Also, it makes sense to pay attention to this so it doesn't get shot with arrows. So what's the delay on this? There isn't much of one. It looks like there's a delay in the animation, but it does lock on immediately where it should be. Oh, they're just charging in here. Wait, <laughs> excuse me. You guys have bows? Man, I did not pay enough attention in class. Or in this battle, for that matter, but I'm sure it's fine. Who needs to control their units well? It's it's not on hard difficulty, we'll be fine. The enemy waver, I feel like there should be a hotkey for this, and I'm just blind, but it's probably fine. Oh, they've just backed away. That makes sense. That seems like a good trap. I'm really desperately looking for a hockey. Shipped plus one. Although it looks like there's not really the targeting PB you get from hovering it. Also, why is it not on cooldown? Didn't I just use it? Oh, they're cycle charging. I see what's happening. This would definitely be like a lot better if I were using my archers as archers and not just being unaware they had this option. Also, if I weren't controlling my phalanx accidentally here. Just generally terrible, but that's fine. We expect nope, don't go in, please. Yes, this is definitely like not the best way to do this. It's probably fine. That was not as focused as it should have been either. Handle that. Spearmen. All the spearmen here for except duty. for you. Oh, I also sent these guys in by accident. So how effective is just sending the phoenix in to fuck up the archers? Because it seems decently good so far. 
back off at this point, just because I know regeneration is a thing. I don't want any one unit getting two damage. To battle! Serve the king! Champion of Alaria! The enemy attack your flanks, Commander! Drive them off! Are you sure the enemy attacks my flank? I think this is mostly handled. Also, my cavalry should probably be over there not fighting spearmen, huh? I don't know how much rock, paper, scissors exists in this game, but probably enough that they should be fighting the archers and not the spearmen. Understood. Understood. Air of Alarian. So I think this is generally gone well, but considering it's normal difficulty, I took fairly substantial casualties. Hopefully by the time we do this on higher difficulties, we're better at the game. This cavalry is getting pretty messed up. They send them to run that down and have everyone else start shooting the Lord. Because apparently there's a Lord over here I just haven't noticed yet. How's this Phoenix doing? It's sort of funny to watch is how it's doing. Good luck. All of that's running, so I guess I should be running it down. Oh wait, what are you doing? Hey guys, shoot this and do it, please. Your warriors tire, mighty lord. Yet exertions dull their ability to fight. Give them time to rest, even amidst the thickest of battles. So I think I don't want to hit in battle until uh, this guy's dead, right? I think that's essentially the way this works. Definitely lost more than I should have, for sure. Like, not realizing these guys were archers was an egregious mistake. <laughs> not much to say about that one. They're so much better at running stuff down. I was just expecting to get away because I'm playing Rome Remastered, but they just circled him and started beating him to death. That's notably more effective than I was expecting it to be. It's certainly taking a hot second, but we did manage to kill him eventually. Not gonna get a replay of that one, don't particularly feel proud of it. But we did only lose like 40 men and kill their stack, so, you know, it's still good. I just feel like I should have done better. For obvious reasons. The real question is, would auto-resolve have lost more than 36 people? And I think the answer has to be probably, right? So we make money no matter what, and then we get the options of execute captives for experience, replenish the army by 7%, or gain some influence and in money. It's gotta be ransom captives, right? I don't know which one the right call is, but I'm ransoming. Now we're in range of the next settlement immediately, so I have to imagine we just attack. Can we not attack this? What's going on? Mission successful, thank you. Is that pop-up getting in the way somehow? Yes, I need to hear the tutorial tell me to attack it. Thank you, I had no idea that was the play. Comes great wealth. And the power to raise forces to defend We have gotten Expand the fireball spell from a state, ring. And deny your enemies the room. You need to stop, sir. Oh, it's been automatically equipped. I was unaware that was a feature. I don't think it is in the tutorial, which is why I didn't know. Fair enough. Oh, but he does still have I a skill point. To serve my queen. So this is a big one where it's like, yeah, there's just a lot here. I'm going to go with Inspiring Presence and the intention of getting stuff that buffs my army. I don't really know what I should be doing. You could easily tell me that Sword Player is supposed to be right, or that I'm supposed to get Route Marcher. They all seem very, very good. I don't know how to compare what's the best at all. I can't wait to get a variety of different answers in the comments from differing opinions. So I should probably actually invest the skill. I think we're all agreed on that point. At your service. Anyway, let's conquer a town. Queen. So their garrison is bleak swords, dread spears, and dark shards. Options, nevertheless, encircling the enemy and starving them out may be the wisest course of action. Yeah, but it's also slow to do that, so we're not going to encircle and starve them out. That's crazy. Wait a second. This is not a tower that we're fighting at. This is just a hill. I was unaware the enemy sallies out to fight on the field. Is that like a choice you get when you're attacked? I'm a little bit confused to why we're not inside of a garrison. I suppose that would be the titular tower of Lysian, but uh, whatever, it's fine. This is definitely to my benefit. 
Oh yeah, I probably should have at some point used the ability I had that is a defensive buff of magic with that person, huh? That's true. Anyway, I'm not gonna bother gambling this time or ever again. Your flying units afford you great flexibility, Commander. Scout and harass the enemy as they maneuver. Shouldn't you have told me that last time? <laughs> oh man, the tutorials don't really feel necessarily helpful right now. I'm afraid that when I do get helpful tutorials, I'll just end up accidentally skipping over them. I would love a tutorial for how best to move to not get hit by missiles. So that was an experiment to see if Holding Shift 1 gave me a tooltip preview, it doesn't. Okay, so the general circular movement seems all right for dodging stuff. Not the best. And since they've basically abandoned their archers, I guess they're dead then. Don't know about that strat. Oh no, they, they noticed that that was happening. They're turning a bit. I'll come antagonize this one that's actually trying to fight us. Both of you shoot him since he's the closest. And we're going to stop this from going bad in a second. I think I missed with that one. No, it was all right. Oh, their archers most definitely did not get saved. Charge here, charge there. Just position forward with this. Back off. Don't fight their spearmen. Where'd my phoenix get to? He's here. And drop that on them. The enemy oh, uh, like I said a second ago, we should probably actually use this ability on somebody. Send his army after him. That's routing, maybe? What's happening here? It will be done. Setting forth. Sail! If one may. Charge that. And you come help kill it. I guess I don't really care if things route, though, because don't I just win if they all route? It's a very good point. That seems effective. Take shots here instead. Once again, drop Wake of Fire on this. Oh, they're routing as it happens, too. It's very sad. Good dodge. Oh, the Phoenix is on the ground now. Just waddling after them. Very scary. Terrifying unit. Yeah, they just barely have time to react, it looks like. Silver helps. Air of Anarian. Without it seems like rather than letting them shoot me, I should just charge their archers immediately. And all this other stuff's routing, so there's no point fighting it. We have one bombard left, seems like a good time to use it. I like the idea of set charges more than magic cooldown, I think. I don't think the morale on normal difficulty was able to handle that. Yeah, that seemed relatively clean. I don't know of any advantage to continuing to fight here, so I'm going to not. If I'm missing out on some benefit, feel free to give me a heads up. We lost three men. Huh. I don't know what auto resolve would have done. It said it would be pretty good, but I don't think it would have been that good. Now, when I've been saying that this is overwhelming, I haven't been referring to the fights so far. Like, yeah, there's a lot to think about with the fights, but it's when we get to this. So, what is this? Conquest penalty and province instability. Okay, so these numbers get worse if I sack, but sacking gets me replenishment and money. I can sack, which does... I don't capture the settlement at all. And raise completely destroys the settlement, I think? I don't know if it can be rebuilt or something, but... 
Man, I'm gonna need to find a video about when to sack and raise. Because right now, it seems like it's always occupy or loot and occupy. I'll be going with the latter in this case, because I feel like I have no reason not to. And this gives me just additional melee damage after I use an ability. Fair enough. Champion. The part where I start feeling genuinely completely overwhelmed is when I look at this like, oh, I need to... I need to make some decisions. <laughs> There's a lot of options I have here about which settlement I'm going to be building what in, aren't there? <laughs> and then it's completely different for most factions. Like, I, I'm sure it's broadly somewhere, but still, it's just so much. Just quick check. We're also looking for Angario and Shrine of Assyrian. That is not over here. There's the Shrine of Assyrian, and there's Angario. So we're looking to cross the ocean. The, uh, the Gentleman Jenkins here. Which faction is this? The Empire, I guess. Wasn't expecting to see this. Hi. Alright, I'm going to take a small break. I'm going to get back to you once I've looked at a bunch of things and come to opinions on them. Because Shield against the there's darkness. just too many options here for me to think out loud and actually come to meaningful conclusions. I just need to read everything for a couple of minutes. Oh, but it also looks like we have a new quest to conquer the entire province, which will get us a cool shield. Thanks. So, my immediate thought looking through the buildings is that I probably want to pick up something for growth, like the homestead. That just seems eminently sensible. And considering my plan really is just to spam on the shit out of archers until later on when I unlock better units, at which point I'll have the building slots for those anyway, it seems like the sensible thing to do with the second build slot is just try to... Well, unless I need to unlock hero recruitment for the noble, I guess. It's either Elven Gardens or something that makes money. See, I've got no idea how valuable the Noble is. What is this for? Constant local effect to increase trade. Maybe that's worth having. I don't know. I'm going to build this and find out. And then I'm going to repair these because it says that it's like doing less for not being repaired. But at the same time, I look at this and I wonder if I'm even going to make the money back from repairing it. But... I just have to assume the game is balanced in such a way where if stuff is damaged, you're supposed to repair it. We're also able to upgrade this and recruit Lothar and Seaguard, but question for missile attack, right? Range 165, missile strength 17. Range 180, missile strength 17. So slightly less range in terms of ammunition, slightly less. Same missile strength. It's 163 upkeep versus 131 upkeep, which is a fairly substantial difference based on my current income. I don't know if it's actually a substantial difference. The Shadow Warriors seem unambiguously better than what I'm currently using in every regard, though, unless they're lower count, they might be. 90 and 90. But with more ammunition, same range, actually better range and better missile strength. I think I'd want Shadow Warriors eventually, so it's just worth building this. There is no tier 2 for that, so that's the building choices I'm making. I ended up not reading everything because it just feels unnecessary to read everything. I feel like the choices I'm making now are fairly self-contained. Someday when I have more influence, I can recruit Alistair the White Lion, but not now. I can recruit Archmages already. Uh, the incompetent and flustered Archmages. I assume these traits are bad. Yes. Every Lord I have increases my total army upkeep by 1%. And then it tells me how much more it's going to cost. So here's my big issue, right? Like, why is there no tooltip about what... Oh, here it is. It's on the left already. We're good. We're good. There we go. That's much better. So an Archmage is a wizard. Princes are sword infantry. Princesses are hybrid weapon infantry. I mean, if you're one person, how good can your bow be? Missile strength 338. I guess that answers that, huh? Try to make up for the missing 70 guys in your group. So do I roll a random lore when I get these guys? Because it's showing like all the different lures they could possibly have. I'm assuming it doesn't have all of them, right? So it's showing a bunch of lures over here, but they also all say specifically Archmage Beast. And one of the lure is the lure of Beast. So I'm assuming that's what they would be of. I don't know that I need this right now, like at all. Because I'm pretty sure the people over here, right? Which are garrison details? No, these are the people actually here. In the garrisons. Oh, is there like another Ready flag here I need to click on? Is that what it is? Yes. Setting forth. And now that we're out of the city, I want to switch to recruitment. Actually, am I not able to do that? I'm not able to recruit this turn. I'm out of movements. So the reason to upgrade here to buy that lord 
is specifically so I can recruit this turn, and that does sound worth doing. It's just a matter of which one I get. But I have to assume that having a wizard is worth doing, right? Hi, Elvin Archmage. So I'm gonna take you. First things first, get out of the towns so that you can recruit. Your army has okay, so you don't can, have the ability to recruit. I see what's happening. Let me load my save. Tyrion, All right, so yeah, the first yeah. thing I got wrong here is with Tyrion himself, which I'm having a hard time selecting. Oh, there you go. Orders. I didn't actually need to leave the settlement. I'm able to recruit no, no, from the settlement. I thought I needed to leave and enter in camp stance, but that's not the case. So I can recruit much cheaper from local recruitment, but from global recruitment, it's much more expensive. However, I'm about to be leaving our territory. Oh, wait a second. These take two turns. All right, so global recruitment is not actually faster. It's going to result in me staying here longer. So I'm just going to recruit the two and then move, I think. Now, I have a question. Let's go back to this lord we were looking at a second ago, who apparently spawns in without anything else, right? Like, they spawn in minus missile resistance or minus increment buildings. I'll take worse missile resistance. That was probably the wrong call, to be honest. But now that you've spawned in, I can recruit units because you're garrisoned. Are you not garrisoned? Are you next to the city? Get in the city. Now that you're in the city. Yes, I'm using the same local recruitment pool, so I can't grab these people. However, I could globally recruit these three and then meet up later. That doesn't seem crazy to me. We should probably input all the same commands, though, involving like what we're building. Oh, I'm out of money. Hmm. I'll find out nobles one turn later. Let's get this stuff repairing now. And since we're already recruiting with everyone, no one's going to be moving. We have more skill points to assign, and I guess I'm going down this one. My plan was to go into Bowmaster. And in case you're wondering why I'm spamming archers, that's pretty much all I did in the tutorial. And it seemed incredibly effective in the tutorial. Except for that one story mission where Corrin spawns heavy cavalry surrounding you without warning you those are even on the mission. That was not a great situation for archer spam. But I felt like archers were just generally very good and see no reason not to start off trying that. Yeah, we're going to go with Bowmaster. That's the reason I clicked Inspiring Presence initially, so that's what I'm taking. I don't know what overcasting is. That also didn't come up in the tutorial. I'm going to guess, though, that this character should learn how to use more magic than it currently does. Right, yes, research is a thing. I suppose we're going for military advancements because is the one I'm able to do. So the Sword of Cain's a term I recognize. Apparently it's over here. We'll learn about that later, I guess. Rights cost a ton of money and have 40 turn durations and... No, 10 turn durations and 40 turn cooldowns. They all have different requirements, but none of them look particularly demanding. At an inexperienced glance, it seems like the one where you gain influence or the one where you gain casualty replenishment rate and negative corruption seems better. But I can't come close to doing any of that, so who cares right now? Anyway, if we had influence, there would be a court where we could do stuff with it, but that's not currently the case. And it looks like I can do it on basically every faction I've met. Speaking of, let's go to diplomacy. I'm sure I should talk to somebody about something, right? I've heard the advice that I should basically always be using quick deal. And I think, like, just who's willing to trade pack me, right? That seems like the sensible thing to be doing. Is there a reason I shouldn't be trading with everyone? Well, the Dread Fleet would rather steal it from me. That checks out. The Scourge of Cain are, you know, the Scourge of Cain. Kalador, I'm guessing, are the ones I'm currently at war with. This man's name is Gilgalion, and I'm down for it. Gilgalion the Phoenix King probably takes himself far too seriously. So I can ask for 200 gold, and it still says that he likes the deal, right? Am I understanding this correctly? Yes. Looks like I can get 150 gold with this trade agreement, so why wouldn't I? I'm at negative zero, huh? Is negative zero just fine? Nah, they're not interested in negative zero. We have to be better than that. Now we're at positive zero. They're down now. So we've made trade rights with a few people to increase our income a little bit. And also gotten some money in that trade right deal to begin with. Is there anything else I should be doing? What are the other quick deals? Not aggression packs, trade agreements, military access, offensive alliance, military alliance. Join confederation. I assume most people are very not okay with that. Yeah, they're like, no, thank you. I have no idea how confederating works. You would think such an obscure and strange mechanic to older total wars would have a part in the tutorial, but no, I don't have any idea how the hell this works. 
We'll get there someday, maybe. But for now, it seems like we're probably done for turn one. We set up some trade deals, we conquered a place, we're recruiting units. Let's see what happens between turns. 282 factions, huh? I kind of expected a number that large, but it's still just staggering to see that number be this ridiculous. So the Dread Fleet is 100% at war with my neighbor to the west. Although, I sort of expected them to land and do stuff. They appear to be doing something else instead. Do naval battles exist? Is that what I just saw? I'm very confused as to what I actually witnessed this boat do. The Freebooters of Port Royal are, unsurprisingly, not the main part of the I Empire. I you to find ways to further your methods of war. Put your best minds uh, what, to work What do you want from me? I'm already researching stuff. <laughs> we did research the technology, didn't we? You would do well to yeah, we already your did that. For in such dangerous <laughs> All right. times, that was a fun to way to mess with my head. Meet the enemy. Yet we'll get a potion sure of speed. Keep an eye on your expenditure. For any standing army. Must be maintained I'm not sure gold. I really care about a potion of speed. I also like that it tires you out, meaning it's not even objectively good. It's a side grade. But it wants us to get five more units. That'll definitely happen on its own over time. So, first question, and possibly most important question. I can just, like, traverse water, apparently. I think what I'm seeing here... I'm turning red here. Is that indicating I could go further with Force March or that I'm... I think this is indicating that's the end of my movement range without Force March. Am I correct? Is that what's happening? Yes. And since I didn't do it at the start, I can't change to Force March now. Wait, I can. It does seem like a bad call because if I were to do this, we would start off tired. And we wouldn't be able to leave. And we wouldn't be able to start battles. Just a variety of reasons not to do this. The fact that you can't start battles means it's literally got no points. Now, can I still recruit with local recruitment? No, because I'm not in my territory. But High that's all right, Archmage. because we have a High Elf over here who can continue recruiting while we're away. And they can meet up with us in a few turns, or maybe next turn even. And I was saying that I was supposed to build this last turn, but messed up and wasn't able to, so let's get that building now. This can be upgraded, and that's probably, honestly, more urgent than whatever dumb thing I'm doing here. Let's get that upgraded. And we'll start that next turn, for real this time. Now, going to the tech tree, I have been talking about how I'm going to archer spam, so we're going to click on archery prowess and call it there. And that's it for this turn, apparently. I've noticed the speed up animations button. Let's click that. It appears to be working on all screen factions, so that's definitely the button you press. Hey, we've already got our five units. A vigil on expenditure must be maintained for your domain. Yes, I'm aware that armies cost money. Thank you for the heads up. Now, I don't think I even have the money to build this thing I've been talking about, right? Oh, I do. Nice. I was looking at my income, not my actual currently banked money. Now, can this army actually make it in the next place? It can. So we can just merge up now. Um... Apparently, the Archmage herself is not interested in joining the army. Master of Magic. Forces cannot exchange lords. What's she, then? What's this? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm experiencing the confusion. You're a hero. And you're a lord. High Elven and you're a lord. Okay. So there's two separate things. There's heroes and lords, and an army can only have one lord. Okay. You're costing me 250 a turn. What was your upkeep cost or your recruitment cost? 950? I would say that economically speaking, it's probably right just to disband this unit, but I can't seem to find a disband button for them anywhere. So I guess you Magic can come back home. You need this cost me money Trained for the rest of time. But I got five archers tower. out of you, so it's not all downside, Shield I guess. Anyway, I believe we have a city to conquer. Let's go. And I think we just go in immediately. This this feels like all to resolve. Let's click the quick save button. We're on normal difficulty. Surely. Lost you lost 200 men. 
<laughs> you outnumbered them two to one on normal difficulty. You lost 200 men. No, thank you. No, I'm good. We'll load that. I'll click the raise Destroy button just to see what happens, everything. though. Oh. Okay, it's back a little bit. Um, so what's what do ruins do? I appear Champion to run away. Ever queen. Right click to attempt to search the ruins or colonize the settlement. Okay, so they can be rebuilt at a cost. That makes sense. And we're going to fight this ourselves this time because there's no way we're doing worse than what just happens. Yeah, it's another field battle. We don't even have, like, the benefit of wolves. They're outnumbered by the archers alone. This would be brutal. This would be terrible for them. How on earth do we lose 200? So, how do I make it so that when I draw this out, it doesn't decide to put the mixed units in front like this? Spearman. Like, technically, this is fine, I guess. But it's not what I want. For now, I suppose it doesn't really matter. I can just do it the slightly awkward way of doing it manually. Throw this behind. Throw you two in the middle. Cavalry on the side. It's gonna take a while to get through the woods, but there's a path through over here. Phoenix in the front. All right, let's go. Cavalry moves forward. Phoenix harasses things. Archers do disgusting archer things. Harness its power and channel it against your enemy. Everything should probably be a bit further forward than it previously was. Archers are on the right side and the left side, so there's not really an avoiding that. But we'll just, like, swerve around a bit and it'll probably work out, right? Yeah, I, I feel like I'm getting better at moving archers. Or moving around archers, rather. Also, based on the number of arrows I'm already seeing from my team, I feel like things are going well. I do wonder if I should be playing at higher speeds, though. Probably not. It feels very dangerous. Am I flying into my own arrows to some degree here? Probably, right? It feels very dangerous. Speaking of dangerous, though, uh... These archers don't seem like they're having the best time. So I definitely lost some cavalry over here by letting them get shot by archers that I didn't realize were shooting them, but they'll be fine. They're also my least loved units. Alright guys, move forward and shoot some more stuff. I'm gonna let my cavalry fight this. I refuse to believe that you can actually lose this. Is that the only thing still moving? Oh, yeah, everyone's retreating now. Yeah, that was just the archers left. That's them broke. Uh, I may as well run things down for experience. Is that a thing in this game? I refuse to do it. Tell me if it is a thing, though. I should probably know that I'm making the mistake if it is a mistake to make. I know killing lords gets you more loot, but I don't know if anything else actually matters. Oh, we only lost two men. I thought I lost a lot more by cavalry than that. I keep forgetting they just have a lower unit size. Whoops. Anyway, I think I'm going to keep going with loot and occupy every time because it just seems like the money and the replenishment is very good and surely, like, yeah, this stuff is not great, but at the same time, it's probably not the biggest deal. Especially at the start when you're still in, like, the territory you started in, right? Surely you can just get away with it here. I don't know where the numbers are. I should probably look for those at this point. Yes, I understand that things get better as you invest in them thanks to the tutorial. What's this for? Mission issued. Upgrade any settlement building. What do you think I've been doing? So they want me to do a right. I can do this one. Immune to attrition. Corruption. Mine. Why would I do this right now? Just because I can doesn't mean I should. I'm not suffering from attrition. I don't need the cash to be punishment right now. Corruption minus 10. Like, am I being corrupted? The in this city are damaged, my lord. Yes. Repair. Yes, they are. Thank you for the heads up. Shield against the darkness. Repair. Repair. We're currently upgrading, so that quest is about to finish. Wait, no, that's a new building that starts at rank 2. Well, when I get the option to upgrade something, I will. I just assumed because this says income generated, it's a good building to have. Should my first building just be getting destroyed for a growth building instead? That's not necessarily wrong. I guess comparing these two, which are basically both the same place, just one has a growth building and one has income will show you what actually comes of it in this campaign. 
If that's an intentional design choice by the developers, good job, by the way. What do I need for the other rights? I need more technologies. I need a rank five faction leader. And I'm not doing the archive. But like influence per turn from getting a rank five faction leader sounds super reasonable. I'm happy to do that one. Tyrion. And we're almost there. I'm going to keep putting points in Bowmaster because I know what I'm about. Defender of Elf One. All right, we can get real magic now. Passive Roiling Skies, which uh, I'm not going to pick it because it's passive. So this is a thing that makes everyone slower and softer near where you cast a spell, which is definitely good, but I need a spell to cast first. All right, so Wind Blast is an actual offensive spell. This is good against armor and artillery, but right now I'm worried about just like being good against chumps because I see a lot of those rounds. It does not. Oh, I need to wait for it to fill that bar. I see. Otherwise, the tooltip goes away. I'm... What's this do? It's a debuff. Wind Blast it is. Sign me up. Seven. And if we leave, we're out of movement immediately. So the correct thing to do is just to stay here and recruit locally for the one archer that still fits in our army. We're out of money. That's what it is. Hi, Look, I hate to break it to you, but given the choice, we're just going to not repair this for a hot second if I'm forced to make the decision and buy more archers because I know what I'm about. It's this guy. It's clicking that button as many times as I can. This wooden carcass of a treasure ship, this can be searched for the Lord. Huh. I've got a Lord just hanging out. Come look at that. Wait, what's happening? You may have to defeat a foe in battle. A great hoard of treasure may be received. Only a miserly hoard of treasure will be received. I see. So this is actually a thing where you want to use an army and not just a lord. As it always does. The sword Why are you has telling me about the sword of pain? Anyway, I got a thousand gold, so it was still good. But definitely would have been better if I had like an actual army do it on the way over, because I'm pretty sure it's been there for a while and I just didn't see it before. So all the elves can build a shrine at the Shrine of Cain to get the sword, which is given to the Lord who's there once that happens. But any faction can wield it, you just have to beat the previous wielder in battle. And also, it makes you way better at fighting, but also pisses everyone off. Neat trade-off. I look forward to seeing how that works. Definitely have a clear goal to find out something at the end of this campaign. Ever loyal. I and with that additional money, I can repair this right now. I believe that's it for this turn, so let's see what the next one holds. Your kind thrive on the machinations of statecraft, noble lord. That's a little bit racist, dude. What do you mean with that your kind shit? In the halls of Asa, champion of so, the I mean, I just attack this now immediately. And it feels like a good place to end episode one by killing my immediate rivals, right? Arathor, Bleak Swords, Dread Spears, Dark Shards, Dark Riders, and we have new ones, Harpies, Flying Melee Infantry. They've heard about my archer strat, and I believe they picked the, the counter unit for it. Pyrrhic victory is the default result, huh? We're going to encircle this and come back to it at the end of the turn. I think this is already the end of the turn. I just want to see what's going on. We're not recruiting anything anywhere else because we're going to recruit yeah. this up to full 20 archers after we conquer them. I think up until just now, I was thinking, like, I probably could have made two smaller armies and started a war with, like, whoever this is instead, right? But having seen the size of this army with the garrison stack, like, maybe not. Can I attack this guy first? No, it's actually garrisoning the city. That's just a random agent. I think I've been buying archers and not light armor archers. Wait, why does armors... Why did the archers say light armor have 25 more defense, not less? Oh, you mean they have light armor as opposed to no armor and they call slightly more for it. Yeah, I should have been building the better archers. I wasn't aware there was a second identical but better archer right beside the first one. I should have checked, but you were. I think you're probably worth 12 gold a turn per archer for the massively increased armor. You know, for the possibility that you get hit by anything ever. That's a little bit weird. I don't know that both these units needed to exist. Oh, hey, the port's growing already. That might be, like, immediate proof of the thing that I was thinking. Anyway, I'm glad we didn't build the right. And all that's left this turn is this battle, Seal. so let's get to it, I suppose. I don't think this is going to be a Pyrrhic victory. Oh, hey, look at them. They're actually in a city this time. I've lost all faith. If someone can tell me, like, what the difference between field battles for settlements and these are, like, it might just be settlement size. It might be something else. I have no idea. 
All I know is it's funny every time I try to attack a city and we meet in the field of battle instead. To be clear, I'm not complaining, I hate siege battles. I haven't really played any of them in this game yet, so I'm just going off old Total War, but I imagine they're going to be terrible, because they always have been and I imagine they always will be. It's much more aesthetically impressive than the old sieges. Like sure, the game's way prettier than old Total Wars across the board, but I think the settlement graphics are far and away the most direct and massive upgrade. I will take the tour. Wait, are you making me play the battle or just telling me about it? I'm not sure I needed to click that tutorial button. I don't think I learned anything there, but at least I tried to be thorough. I'm going to be honest. My first thought is I just want to have my archers shoot into the city. Like, can all of you just waste these guys? And while you're doing so, I imagine my phoenix should be flying around farting fire like it always is. Y'all seem a little bit out of range. Let's move you up. Probably don't want to fly into my own arrows. It's not even a thing. Is friendly fire still in this game? Nah, I'm good. I'm going to shoot them with arrows for a long time first. Oh, wait. Can their flyers attack my flyers while we're both in the air? Let's back off for a hot second. I thought something was happening in the river. It's just the light reflecting on it. Yeah, sorry guys, I meant to buy you armor, but 13 gold a month was just too much. You couldn't do it. I actually just want to see, like, A, I want to drop fire on two units of archers at once. But B, can these guys attack me while I'm in the air? Is there air-to-air -air combat? And that seemed worth doing. Am I mostly dodging this? It feels like I am, which is very silly. All right, so are they able to attack me? It certainly looks like they're trying to. Hey, archers. Nope, they stopped. They backed off. I guess I'm effectively wasting their ammunition, so it's good to be in there. I haven't really thought about that. I'm about to say merit, though. I could just run for my lord, who's been doing nothing for a while because of the way I've been playing this. I guess the, what are they, the Lothar and Seaguard should be higher forward, or further forward, rather. But yeah, Operation just rain arrows into the city seems pretty effective so far. I don't know of any mechanics where I'm less accurate by shooting uphill or into the city. Those could be a reason not to do this, but right now it seems like not doing this would just be a tremendous waste of resources. Champion of Alaria. Anyway, let's go on triple speed for a second as we get our guy forward. Because we're not exactly making decisions over here. Now, I don't know if you're actually able to dodge. Is there a tower shooting at me? I don't know what that was coming from. Yeah, it's coming from here. Yeah, it's this tower shooting down through that gap. So they aren't really interested in shooting at this guy where he currently is. The main reason I wanted to do this was to bait the flyers into landing so I could shoot them with archers. And they're not really falling for that. Also, watching the completely missed shots is fairly funny. Yeah, the Flyers are finally making their way back. And then they turned around again. Hmm. So we killed about 300 of them so far. 330, really. Moving out. I'm trying to think... I want to know what to do with the harpies. They're just kind of stressing me out. Also, you're still shooting at him. Let's back up a little bit further. Yeah, these guys are in range of that tower. Let's back up even further. Nope, we're still in range of that tower. It's got very long range. All right, since I I don't want to back up any further, what we're going to do is move forward with everyone and have Tyrion in the front. It's been prioritizing him so far, really. Without fail, it shall be done with me. We're going to go back on to fire at will as well. Are they shooting those? Hell yeah. Okay, so you can shoot flying units properly. 
Makes that a much softer counter than I had previously imagined it to be. Are you good, Phoenix? You don't need to go around it. All right, off he goes. People need him. Battle awaits. Onward. I feel like things are going well because, I mean, I've got so many archers, how could they not be going well? But I don't know that that's actually true. Like, what happens when I run out of archers? Or run out of arrows, rather. Yet, I don't know if these spires are working the best. You guys want to land and fight? I think they're kind of landing and fighting. I'm not sure how to come up is the problem. I mean, I'm going to. I'm just going to move forward and hope it works out, but this doesn't feel elegant in any way. Oh, Phoenix, what are you doing? Why are you on the ground? Is there a get in the sky button? Yes, it's called waiting, and he immediately realizes that he's made a mistake. You don't have to fly over it, Phoenix! Oh, right, I have fucking magic now. I've learned spells. Alt 2. Of course that's the hotkey. I'm not gonna use hotkeys is what I'm learning. Ready. Forward. Saying I'm not gonna use hotkeys upsets me greatly. I don't know if I can actually hold up that theory. Here again, I don't see a reason for you to be forward like this. I've got a couple of bombardments left here. I'm gonna go make a point to use them. Come on, get your way through the spears. You can do this. Why is it sometimes on the left and sometimes on the right? Is it based on whether or not they're a lord, whether or not it's magic? I think whether or not it's magic. Okay, yeah, alt is magic and shift is abilities. I think I understand. How's arrow count doing? It's all right. You probably want to be moving. The cooldown on that's decently long. Unlike this, the cooldown on the Phoenix is very, very short. They stack up at all. They're blobbing here a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. Over here, we have this ability back. That seems solid. And you have this back as well. I go there. 20 seconds on that. Archer's still doing some amount of work. We have another bombard. Making my way. No one's shooting at you, forward. so you're basically on fine. I haven't seen arrows in a while, so I think we're good to bring Tyrion forward. I'm gonna drop my last bombard on this thicker unit that's left over here. Yep, that. All right, you are out of bombardment. You don't really matter anymore. Forward. Looking at the balance of power real quick, we've lost nine people, 11 rather, and they've lost 900. That's total war for you, all right? All right, I need to get these spearmen running forward. That's just gonna be necessary very soon. What I'm going to do is pull these units to the right just a little bit, make it easier for my spearmen to get in. I might want to hold fire for a little while so I can actually shoot the remaining full health units. Regardless, for now, how are we doing on magic? We have 44 magic left. Every time I use this spell, you're not the right person. Every time I use this spell, I'm using... This should be easier to find. Where is it? Five, maybe? The number in the top right? I have no idea. Sword of the Asur. Ulfwan Mage. Okay, this should be very effective in a second. Oh, it slows the camera down when I select that. Neat. Yes, setting forth. And they changed their mind when they saw that coming down. Onward. We right, we're gonna. Uh, you're basically all out of ammo anyway. I may as well just let you My finish. Power is yours. Heir of Anarian. 
Alright, you guys run in. You two keep running around. All of you cancel fire at will. Forces move up. Phoenix, I might have use of you as an actual unit soon. Hi, mage. I go then. We're still looking at four seconds cooldown here. Seeking the foe. Um, where is the nearest capture point? Is it to the right? It is to the right. The well, all the same, right? The like, there's just a ton of people cool. over here. It will be done. You're a fair. Get Set these two way. running in as well. Actually, running on the right side against this charge that's coming. Grab all of this. Oh, it does not like being pulled there. We're going to do our best to get involved. All of this should route pretty immediately because they've just been getting destroyed by arrows for a very long time. I want this Archmage, though. Step back. Drop it there. Seems effective. Oh wait, are they erecting this currently? Was that there before? I don't know that it was. I'm gonna fly my Phoenix to the other side of this and try to distract the arrows and start taking a point. I'm not sure if this is what I should be doing in a siege. I feel like there's kind of an unreasonable number of dudes in here. Considering how many of them I've killed already. Why are you alerting me that an enemy building is under attack? I know, that's that's the point. Are they routing? What's happening? You can fire at will, I've changed my mind. Over here I have more magic. Seems solid. I'm not quite sure what the maximum range on magic is. I feel like there's a circle showing up around me that's unrelated to what I'm telling it to do. Also, this dodging has not been the best recently. You're going to need to get in there. All of you shoot that guy, by the way. Bleak Swords are losing a lot, but I don't think they're losing enough. Also, why are a bunch of you running around right now? Are you charging? This is your out of ammunition. Does not mean I wanted you to charge. There's been a miscommunication about what that command meant. I need to pause and breathe for a second. This is just grueling is how I feel about sieges right now. Because there's just so fucking many of them. Like, I've exhausted the ammunition of an entire army. It's like, oh yeah, there's still a thousand left, though. I don't feel like I'm going to lose. I don't feel like there's any risk of that. It's just like, what's the next step? There's just so much more to conquer. There's just so much city to go around. So it feels like using my ammo efficiently is actually a concern I should have had. Uh, all of you stab them, since otherwise we're going to waste a lot of arrows. And we don't have arrows to waste, evidently. Here. Use that. And we're conquering a points. I'm going to be honest. I think I'd be cool if you didn't need to kill all the enemies to win. I think that'd be fine by me. As you say. This phoenix is probably taking a lot of damage I don't want it to be taking at this point. I want it to replenish and not get horribly messed up for the rest of the time. I want you on the other side of all this so that I actually have you in the correct group. Eager charging, huh? Hey, magic person, run back. And the rest of this... Like, get organized. Fall back a little bit. Wait, are they actually... They're broken, but I don't know if that means... Yeah, they're routing. Good. Northern Seaguard. Damage sustained, winded. Making my way. So there's this circle around me, but it's not related to this, I don't think. Because I'm pretty sure I can target that, like, all the way from here, I even. No, not quite. How close do I actually need to be? Like, what really is the range? Because obviously, queuing attacks like that's terrible. I would never want to do that. Uh, we have fully captured that point, by the way. Wait, is it actually just like the circle around me? Because I feel like I've been casting outside of it for most of the time. The good. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's not quite the circle. It's something different. It will be done. Which is very weird. I'm gonna leave her over here because these units aren't designed to fight like this. Oh, hey, that's their lord. We probably need to deal with that. Don't you have abilities? Oh my god, I have a fireball ability from an item I got. Yeah, toss that over there. See what that looks like. It appears to not quite be targeted where I clicked and then gave up. And I never saw an animation. Interesting. Not quite sure that's how it should work. Not confident that went correctly. Not the way you want to be using your archers, but they're also out of arrows, so what are you going to do? Wait, is this their lord? No, that's Dark Riders. Their lord's the one on the right. He's completely fine. And there's a bunch of routing shit. Let's send the Phoenix at the Dark Shards that aren't routing. Mage. Over here. Ready. Onward. They're broken. No, something else is broken, I say. Take this, target here and that way. Uh, that... I must have messed up. It felt like I moved my mouse after letting go and then it still went through. I don't know if I messed up or something else. Are they all dead? I want to see the editing on this. I feel like I didn't quite kill them all. And I certainly didn't cap all the points. Were they all briefly routing at the same time? Maybe that was it? I've watched videos before and been like, I'm not quite sure why the siege ended. I just assumed that if I were playing the siege, I would be aware of why the siege ended, but I'm not. I'm glad it did, though. I didn't want to play that for another 15 minutes. So we lost 123. Basically nothing. That's surprising. I thought my archers would have suffered much graver losses than that. Anyway, feeling good about archers, fam. I'm glad I wasn't slogging through that with melee units. I'm getting tips for, like, what is a settlement and what is a unit and what is a faction. And I'm going to be honest, I feel condescended to like, why even put the tip on the loading screen if it's only for people who haven't played the tutorial? You think they're reading the loading screen tips? You think they're going to get anything out of that? So, of the units that were getting kills, it looks like it was the one or two units that were fighting my archers, and then the Lord got a good pile of kills as well. That checks out. Whereas with my guys, it's like, oh yeah, every unit of archers killed at least 50 people. They were great. Also, the Phoenix did good work. The Priest did good work. Surprising amount of kills on these guys. I'm guessing they were inadvertently running down routing units very effectively. And by inadvertently, I mean I lost track of things. I'm sorry. I was outnumbered by 50%, like exactly. I killed them all. I lost 10% less than of my army. That's a close victory. I think I know this one. When it says close victory, it's aware that I used like all of my ammunition. That's why it thinks it was close. Is that correct? Because otherwise I have no idea how that was close. <laughs> Anyway, we get 3,900 experience on Tyrion, 2,500 gold, and then we're going to loot and occupy, like I always do, until I figure out why it's wrong. First, we get 1,000 gold and enchanted shield that makes Tyrion better. I saw a Druki to Shoyer pop up briefly. I got another shield. I can't really use both, but thank you. So I got Druki to Shoyer for fighting Dark Elves repeatedly, and now I get plus 5 leadership when fighting Dark Elves. Neat. I also got Crown of Command, which is an enchanted item. And what does this do? One unit, affected units, allies in range, max one. So one random unit near me gains unbreakable. That sounds like absolute garbage. If it was like all the units near you, I'd be like, oh, that's really cool. That might actually be worth using. Who cares if one random guy is unbreakable? I guess it's an active ability, it's not a passive, so I pick someone and I make them unbreakable. This is okay if I can use it on someone who's already routing, right? Like, if I can make a routing unit stop with this, that's different. But if this is just something I have to do ahead of time, it's useless. I'm assuming it's the former and it's not useless. Oh yeah, we got the random shield, we've also attained the full province now. Oh, we're not the Eatain, that's the place we're in, okay. A commandment. Once you completely control a province, you can issue commandments, which are apparently powerful bonuses. Let's hear about it. And I killed the Cult of Excess in their entirety. And I unlocked the Invocation Viserion. Cool. Hi, Elvin. You can go ahead and keep not moving, that's fine. But skill points do need to be assigned. I still don't know what overcasting is. I should have looked 
at something and trying to figure out what an overcast is. Looking at this tooltip and hovering over overcast, I've got nothing. So wind blast cost five mana. Still cost five mana. Wind blast upgraded cost eight mana. Deals notably more than damage than that though. It's a fifty percent increase. I mean, I'm just gonna keep putting points in wind blast because I mean, if you won't wind blast, then you really won't wind blast, right? That's just how it works. I Summit think. Of the king. I'm gonna keep getting ammunition for archers. Apparently, that was very important, and I made a good call with that. To get to Rally, I need to spend two more skill points in this section. Not sure I care, so what does Rally unlock? Armor and Missile Strength, so this. I care about that quite a lot. We're going to keep going down Red Line like an idiot. I'm sure there's a good reason not to do what I'm doing, but for now... So to me, it seems like a big reason not to go down Red Line is because after I get Bowmaster finished, like, why do I care anymore? Draft Master seems very strong, considering I've already filled up the army. I'm not convinced I care about that too much right now. Oh, I can get Speed of Assyria now, though. And just be faster than I used to be. I'm going to pick up some stuff for fighting with this guy. Actually, can I undo that? I think it's wrong, but it's also the thing that stands out to me. Like, I'm just making archers. This one says more missile strength, more missile resistance, and more armor for archers. It seems crazy not to go for this if I have an army of almost exclusively archers at this point. So, I just want whatever goes best with them. And that would just be combined elites, right? To put something in front of them? Yeah. So even though it's probably wrong, I'm going to keep Ever doing it. Loyal. More points into it, then. Tower of Lysing grew, like, right after the other one, so it doesn't have to need, like, a particularly big impact. You're trying to recruit units with a militia camp. I already do that. So that doesn't do anything. But we're going to destroy that instead. Imminent Rebellion! So that's why you shouldn't loot everything. Thank you. I've been wondering about that. So what do I do about an imminent rebellion? Yes, your control is completely fucked because you sacked... Well, not sacked. It's called something else. You looted every settlement in the region. They're furious. That checks out. So I could not collect income and that would be less bad. But like, what do I actually do about this? Because I'm pretty sure this is just a polite heads up like, hey... You've made bad decisions. The consequences for your actions are coming for you. And that checks out. Like, I'm glad there are consequences for my actions. I'm glad to see that there was a downside to this. But I have no idea what I'm supposed to do about it this turn. I, like, there's a notification. Like, I'm supposed to click a button, but I don't think I am. I'm just going to click skip notifications. I don't know what it wants from me, but let's do the this, whatever this is. What is this? Commandment available. Okay. So there's a button here that shows me all the commandments. I can banish corruption. I can rally citizen militia. I can rebuild lost splendor. I can increase income. Or I can reduce the chance of people sneaking through. Now, unfortunately, none of those help with the incoming crisis. And devastation, minus one. Just so you know, some good old-fashioned devastation. It looks to me like as long as there's not a rebellion next turn, we're still fine. In the next turn or two. Well, that's unfortunate. If it weren't for the negative 30, we'd be looking at negative 15 to positive 16. It'd be barely improving. Well, screw it. We might find out what a riot looks like. Anyway, about that commandment. Let's increase growth, I guess. Or increase income? I'm going to increase income. I just want to see how much effect that had, because it looks like very small numbers. And coming over to rights, I don't have the money to do it, apparently. I thought I did. I'm just barely short. Let's end turn and see if the rebellion starts now. We should be able to recruit here. Shield against the dust. Yes, I'm able to get two more archers here. And like obviously the correct choice is the armored ones, but I've been getting the unarmored ones every time, so we're gonna keep making that same mistake. And let's go ahead and see if the rebellion happens now and what a rebellion even means. Oh hey, this guy might be the rebellion. I just noticed them. They might be something else too. I've got no idea what they're about. I issued a commandment. Cool, we got a shield. I'm supposed to capture a second province. Cool. Money is the lifeblood. I know I need money. Thanks for the heads up. Mission issued. Have an income of three thousand, and you'll get a cloak of beards. Leadership when fighting against dwarf causes fear, causes fear. 
Your foolish Fair subjects. enough. I would like to learn more about remotes, please. So unlike old rebels, they don't just sit there forever and make the map ugly. They steadily get bigger until they can kill you. Also, this does not solve the control problem as a heads up. However, control doesn't really seem like a major issue here, to be honest, right? Yeah, yeah, the insolent fools, I know. Advisor to the king. is be like, hey, maybe stop sacking the settlements. <laughs> now, the important thing here is not any of this. Trait gain, disciplinarian, neat. This army doesn't look very threatening. It's literally six guys. No. The first question, can we just reach them this turn? Like, not quite. And they look friendly. I'm not quite sure if I want to, like, try to recruit units here and just kill them with this. I guess the first part of that question is pretty straightforward, though, right? If we go to recruit units, and we click this button a bunch, we run out of money, so it seems like a bad plan. But I'll start figuring out what to do about my new rebels and where I'm going with my army and all of that next turn. For now, I'm done. I've been having a good time. I don't think sieges are particularly well implemented, but I do generally like the look and feel of Warhammer 3 quite a lot so far. I think there's so much I'm learning as I play that I don't really have solid opinions to formulate and talk about right now, so I'm just going to end it here. I've been rather incoherent. Thank you for watching. There's no mod community I need to thank this time. That's weird. Used to playing heavily modded games. Anyway, I still need to thank my one Patreon supporter, Jeffrey Bay, and I'll see all of you in the next one.